So after a crazy win yesterday against the Cincinnati Bengals, this week could get even more exciting for the Baltimore Ravens because as we've been keeping up with Devontae Adams, this is the latest on him that came out today from Jordan Schultz. It says, the Raiders' preference as an organization is to get a Devontae Adams trade done sooner rather than later per multiple sources. Uh, but the Raiders aren't going to do just any deal and their preference has been not to take on any of the money remaining on Adams' contract. Expect things to ramp up this week. So, Basically, that's saying like, look, Raiders trying to move Devontae Adams. They're trying to get this thing done, get it out the way, get whatever compensation they're going to get for Devontae Adams, whether that be uh, draft picks, whether that be player, whether that be a player and draft picks, whatever it may be. But they are trying to get this thing finalized and done ASAP. But then following up that, Jordan Schultz also said, uh, teams interested in trading for Devontae Adams have told me it's unrealistic for the Raiders to expect a second rounder while also having uh, the acquiring team take on his full 2024 salary. That's what we said from jump. Like, we knew and know Raiders ain't getting no second rounder for Devontae Adams. Not that he isn't worth it, but if Raiders going to be like, look, y'all going to take on both the player and that high salary? <laughs> the team's going to be the second rounder. What? That, if, if a team was to take on both, which some of them could, then the, the trade compensation that they send to the Raiders, then it's not going to be much of anything at all. Because in order to take all of that on and give you a second round, no, that's highway robbery. Anyway, continuing, he also said, there doesn't seem to be a team desperate enough to give Vegas everything they're asking for. Would appear likely the Raiders have to give in on something. But the Raiders could also just tell teams they'll keep Adams and that's it. So they could go that route. But will they go that route? Nah, they won't. But I, I know you're hearing all that and wondering, like, what does this have to do with the Baltimore Ravens? Like, that don't change anything as far as news on the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to Devontae Adams. Well, get this. The Baltimore Ravens, as of right now, they are the new favorites to land Devontae Adams. Now, I have seen some of these polls and some of these odds last week. When it came to teams who could potentially land Devontae Adams, and Ravens were pretty high in a lot of them. For some of them, for some of them they were one. For a lot of them, they were two or three. But they were usually in the top three for every odds that I saw when it came to a team landing Devontae Adams. But this week, after yesterday, they moved up to number one. Now, when you think about it, why would the Baltimore Ravens move up to number one? They just won their game. But I think that's just it. The Baltimore Ravens. They won their game. Now, the Saints, they still got to play tonight, and they're they going against the Chiefs. So you just feel like the Saints, they're going to get okie doke. It's going to be some crazy calls that all go the Chiefs' way when you like, man, what? But anyway, the Saints saw one of the teams that he was favored that, to go to, but also the Jets. And you see what happened to the Jets yesterday. Now, depending on how you look at this thing, depending on how you pose it for the Jets, you could be like, look, Devontae, this is why the Jets – Need you even more because you saw what we got. It wasn't enough. Garrett Wilson wasn't enough. Mike Williams wasn't enough. The Jets need you, Devontae. We need you ASAP. They could frame it like that. Or you could look at it like, hey, Devontae, you saw them Jets. You saw how they struggled. You, that's where you want to go. You, 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 you talked about how money not an issue. Money's not the thing. You're not chasing stats. You want an opportunity for a Super Bowl. So if you look at the Jets, you think you... Really? So it, depending on how you pose it, you can pose it a positive way or you can pose it in a negative way. But then look at the Baltimore Ravens. You look at that game yesterday from the Baltimore Ravens. And just really look at them overall. They're a team that even though they, they got their issues and they got plenty of issues, they're finding a way to get it done. They're finding a way to close stuff out. They're finding better ways to be better closers. Something about yesterday's game that we didn't talk about in the post-game thoughts uh, at all, I don't think. But it's something that's so significant from yesterday's game. The Baltimore Ravens, three different times in yesterday's game, they were down by double digits. Three different times they were down by 10 in yesterday's game. And guess who won? Ravens did. We so used to the Baltimore Ravens being the team that when they up, they squander leads. But when they down, I, and, and we continue to hear so much people say, oh, Ravens, like I saw somebody say it yesterday in the last, I'm, I'm like, people are still really saying this? They really still saying the same thing about the Baltimore Ravens, still saying the same thing about Lamar Jackson this far, this deep into his career? 
People were saying, oh, what's going to happen when the Baltimore Ravens, people know that the Baltimore Ravens got to pass. What are they going to do? How are teams going to play? How are the Baltimore Ravens going to play? How are they going to adjust? Are they going to be able to make the plays? What's going to happen when everybody knows the Ravens are passing? What's going to go down then? And it's like, that's such a, it's such a lame take, man. It's such a tired take. It's like, really? And yesterday showed you, like, hey, there you go. There you go. And then when you look at the passing chart, when you look at the passing chart, like, it wasn't just, because I know they were, and I know, like, last week it hurt a lot of Bills fans. Because I know Bills fans, and, and I was just talking to one of my guys about this today, that I, I hate how when it comes to rivals and teams, fan bases, and all that, of course they'll be riding for that guy, whoever their quarterback is, and they'll give you all these reasons why their quarterback is better than yours, or blah, blah, blah. But... We see it a lot with Bills fans. They're like, oh, um, well, the way that Derrick Henry ran against the Bills, maybe Lamar Jackson will get his third MVP. So they're basically trying to say, like, oh, Lamar didn't deserve the MVP last year. They've been saying Josh Allen is better. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but what gets lost a lot when it comes to these different fan bases is respect for these quarterbacks. Josh Allen is nice, man. <laughs> that 9 out of 30. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Josh Allen, he, he, he's, he's really good. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of Bills fans, they disrespect Lamar. Say, "Oh, Lamar ain't nothing." A lot of Ravens fans, they disrespect Josh Allen. I was say, "Little Josh Allen ain't nothing." But in my opinion, both of them are nice, man. Then look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's another one. Who? Joe Burrow's a baller. That man can play. But a lot of Ravens fans say, "Oh, Joe Burrow overrated." Da, da, da. A lot of Bengals fans say, "Oh, Lamar Jackson overrated." But the the respect gets lost. Because teams, are, I mean, fans are riding for their team. They're riding for their quarterback. So I understand that part. But I still think you could show a level of respect to these other guys because they could play the game as well. But anyway, um, with the passing chart from yesterday's game, I, I remember a lot of Bills fans last week, they were like, oh, a bunch of Lamar Jackson's passes, they came at or behind the line of scrimmage, and it was all the receivers and the running backs. They were doing all the extra work. They were getting all the yaks. So that made Lamar Jackson's numbers look better. It's like... Uh, it, it just like it, yeah. But anyway, you look at the passing chart from the Bengals game, and then people will say, "Oh, Lamar can't. He can't throw outside the numbers. All he does is use the middle of the field. Oh, the Ravens. All they, they do is just use screen pass. Lamar showed you once again. He's shown us this plenty of times, man. But Lamar showed you once again. Like, stop listening to that stuff, man. Stop listening to when people say that stuff, man. Lamar can make every single throw. He can make every single, he, he can do that stuff, and we've seen it year after year after year after year after year, man. So when people say stuff like that, oh, he's, he, he can't throw outside the numbers. He's inaccurate. He doesn't, like, look, every quarterback's going to miss some passes. Not every single quarterback's pass is going to be on the money every single throw. There's nobody who's passes like that every single throw. But Lamar, he makes way more plays than he misses. I even remember in yesterday's game, like he, there was a couple passes that he missed, a couple of them that he said a little bit high, but I didn't realize too, not to say this is excuse, because if you miss, you miss, but it was pretty windy. It was, it was, it was really windy outside uh, for, for a good part of the game, but still, if you miss, you miss, but Lamar, once he got going, he got going, he really, really got going, and he was throwing that ball all over the field and the Bengals knew the pass was coming because the Baltimore Ravens were down by double digit scores three t different times in the game so they knew the Ravens had to get back in the game and they had to get back in the game fast and the Ravens did just that with the passing game so many different people were getting involved like literally everybody was getting involved everybody so Getting back to Devontae Adams, I know we kind of went sideways a little bit, but that's okay. But getting back to Devontae Adams, if you, you could show him that, you could show him the ball to, like, hey, look, you, see, you, you already know about Lamar Devontae. You already know about the Baltimore, but get this, Devontae, you, you will be playing. You, you see what Derrick Henry been doing. You see, you see what he been doing. And te like teams, they, they got to sell out for Derrick Henry. They got to sell out to stop Derrick Henry. Ooh, that makes life easier for you. But get this. We as Ray, we, we know how to get other people involved too. Look at Zay Flowers. Look at Rashad Bateman. Look at Isaiah Light. Charlie Cola. Mark and Justice Hit. Then of course Lamar Chat. We got so many different ways that we can get it. If you get added to the mix, 
you get to be another way that we can get it. And you can, we're already dangerous. Like, look, Devontae, we a very dangerous team. And you see that guy number seven over there? That's a route runner. That, that's a, and Zay Flowers a route runner too now. But number seven, that, that's, that's a route runner. But, and, and, and with, with him, that's another thing too. That was another very big positive about yesterday's game. Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman, that chemistry is building. It really is. They, they really starting to get it now. So it's really only up from here. It really is, and they need that. But they could show him Rashad Bateman. Say, look, Rashad Bateman, somebody that it just for years it just hadn't been working for one reason or another, but he's getting it. You, you a veteran. You've been in this game way longer than him. You, you, you know what it takes. You know everything that you ask to do. And then when plays break down, oh, you comfortable with that as well. You good with the on-time stuff. You good with the off-time stuff, with the stuff on script, off script, all of that, Devontae. You good with it all. And here, we can run it all. We can do that, all, all of that stuff. So imagine us coming out. Three wide receivers, one tight end, two wide receivers, two tight, whatever. Just imagine coming over here to what we got going on here. You saw them first couple of games. You saw them first couple of games against the Chiefs and against the Raiders. We, yeah, we had some little hiccups here and there. We squandered those games at the very end, but we were right there in it. And we were just a couple of plays away. Devontae, if you was with us, those couple of plays, those, those two games, they would have went the other way. They would have been different. They would have been much different. So I think with Devontae Adams, it, it should be an easy sell for the Baltimore Ravens. It should be an easy sell. The hardest thing is just selling the Raiders on whatever you're going to give them in order to acquire a Devontae Adams. But knowing that the Baltimore Ravens are the favorites to land a Devontae Adams, that's good news to me. Now it's just a matter of time of if they'll end up making it happen. Real quick, before we continue, I got to say, um, I, I know all of us in Florida, we expecting this hurricane to be here really soon. So all my people in Florida, make sure you stay safe, stay smart, do what you got to do, get what you got to get. Hopefully, this thing just ends up reducing drastically because right now they're saying it's a Category 5. Category 5, I believe, is like the worst kind of, uh, the worst kind of hurricane. But um, get what you got to get, do what you got to do. Just be smart. Be, be, be smart with whatever you're going to do, whether you're going to stay home, you're going to go somewhere, just, just, just be smart um, and, and take care of your people, take care of yourself uh, and just and, and be prepared. Be prepared as you possibly can because you never know how these things are going to go. Hopefully, it ends up being a case where it just it just drops. And right now, they're saying it's a five and the wind's going, everything's going crazy, but hopefully it just falls off, it just drops and, and it just goes away and nobody gets impacted by it whatsoever but just wanted to let my, my florida people know stay safe man stay safe and stay smart i know we all looking for even more ways to keep it clean right well let me introduce you to mando mando is a whole body deodorant literally for everywhere your neck your back your armpits your legs your feet and anywhere where the sun don't shine we said they're everywhere right because unfortunately body odor doesn't just stay in one place but fortunately mando doesn't either because it's for everywhere here's mando's four-in-one acidified cleansing bar it's a five ounce bar that does the work of shampoo face wash body wash and deodorant it's clinically proven to control odor for 24 four hours and it comes in three cologne quality scents mount fuji is fresh and woodsy bourbon leather is sweet and sophisticated and pro sport is clean and citrusy now here's my personal favorite for mando their bourbon leather body wash every time i use it it got me feeling like a brand new man and then it keeps me smelling really good too so that's a nice bonus but mando's whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor but gentle enough to use everywhere allowing you to put mando on those special somewheres without any worry because mando is aluminum free baking soda free cruelty free dye free and it's vegan but how can you get your hands on it well i'm getting ready to tell you mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers it comes with solid deodorant cream tube deodorant and two free products of your choice my choices ended up being the deodorant wipes and my personal favorite again the body wash and another bonus you get free shipping luckily i have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market new customers get five dollars off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to over 40 percent off your starter pack use code engraven at shopmando.com s h O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. John Harbaugh, head coach of the Baltimore Ravens. He had his weekly post-game presser. Well, the one on Mondays following the game because you know they do the presser right after the game. But anyway, 
Um, the biggest question that I was waiting for, what is the status with Marlon Humphrey? What's happening with him? Uh, he, of course, had the boot on yesterday. And when you see the boot, it's, it's never a good thing. I know it can be precautionary and whatnot, and that's what we hope that it is. But this is what John Harbaugh said about Marlon Humphrey's status. He said um, that he doesn't want to make any promises about Marlon Humphrey's status, but he said, I think we're in good shape. Um, and Harbaugh did say it was a physical game, and there were a lot of Ravens banged up, yeah, especially after that game. Um, so with Marlon Humphrey, just got to wait it out. Just got to wait it out. Um, I would think, I mean, definitely by Wednesday, we get the practice report, see if he practices or not. My assumption, not a doctor, but my assumption is that Marlon Humphrey will be out for a little bit. That's just my assumption, though. I would love to sit my behind right back down in his chair, come grab this microphone, put it right up to me, and, and, and come out here and say, hey, I thought Marlon Humphrey was going to be out for a little while, miss maybe a couple of games, but guess what? he's back practicing. I was completely wrong. Oh, you, you know I own it. I own that all day. No, no problem. And I hope that ends up being the case. But I don't think it will. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see very, very soon over the next couple of days. Um, is, it is something that is concerning. Just thinking about potentially being uh, not having Marlon Humphrey. Now, with Nate Wiggins, he's, he's going to be really, really good. He already is pretty good, but he's going to be really, really good. He's only going to get better. Uh, with Brandon Stevens, this has not been his best year so far, but it's not about how you start. Well, it is about how you start. It's about how you both start and finish in the NFL. Um, don't let nobody tell you it's not about how you start because how you start has everything to do with how you finish. Because if you start bad enough, you could try to finish strong, and that could not be enough. So it's about both how you start and finish. Well, Brandon Stevens, we just hope that he just continues to improve. That's it. And he will. He will. But what do they do outside of those guys? Because Arthur Millette, he's – Day to day, week to we'll see what happens with, with Arthur Millette if, if he comes back to practice this week because that would be nice with Marlon Humphrey potentially being out. Again, we don't know anything yet, um, but it's just something that we got to wait and see on. Baltimore Ravens offensive line. While they were not perfect by any means because, again, like Lamar, <laughs> he had made some crazy plays yesterday. Now, some of them plays were due to one – like one of them was due to him fumbling because he fumbled twice yesterday. Two different fumbles. Um, and with one of those fumbles, it ended up dropped the ball, fumbled it, picked it up, rolled out, and found Isaiah. L How he made that play? Nope. But Lamar is the best doing it. He, he's the best in the game. When, when he, anyway, um, the offensive line. I was saying last week when Andrew Voorhees was out, uh, and Harbaugh did say with Andrew Voorhees that he has a high ankle sprain. And he said Voorhees has a chance to return this week, but – this is what got me right here. Harbaugh acknowledged that he likes how the offensive line is playing. So Harbaugh, could it be to where the offensive line is working and you don't try to fix something that's not broken and you have your best starters out there? Could it be? Now, I know a lot of people have recently said that all of the Ravens' good runs, they come to the left. And yeah, like, yeah, the majority of them. I mean, look at that overtime run, too. Came to the left side. But the right side, they could still help getting the job done, too. And I take you back to overtime. Um, and, I, and I told you about this yesterday, the, 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 some of the craziest 10 yards that I've seen. Where on first and 10, Ravens tried to run it. I think Lamar was in shotgun with Derrick Henry lined up to his right. They tried to run it. Bingo said, nope. So then on second and 10, they, 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 they pitched it to Derrick Henry. I remember thinking, like, what? They, this is what they're doing on second and 10? But they pitched it to Derrick Henry, toss it to him. He ended up picking up eight yards. And that has been a formula for success with Derrick Henry. Get the ball in his hands early on in running plays. The, 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 the handoffs, no, you toss it to him. Toss it to him so he'll have the ball in his hands so he can accelerate from jump and then take off. That has been working so much for these past three weeks, and Ravens have continued to implement that, and I've loved it. But um, the right side, they, they can get it done too. So I, I say all that to say this. Don't fix what's not broken. With Andrew Voorhees, if he got a high angle sprain, let him sit. When he's healthy, enough to contribute, okay, come back, cool. But maybe he should be a backup. Maybe. Because if the offensive line is working, if, if, if this thing is clicking – 
you got to leave it as is, especially offensive line. Now, one thing, and it's something that I did not think about when it came to the offensive line. Shout out to Carita C. Parks. Y'all make sure y'all follow her on Twitter. Uh, she works for Bowie TV. She covers the Ravens. She covers the Wizards. She, she covers everything going on. Uh, in Baltimore and DMV and all of that She covers everything I don't know how she does it She be at Ravens facility uh, Going to all of their practices and stuff and, and she is a member of the Ravens media and all that So she be asking the questions At the press conference She's on it But she, I was watching a, um, a live stream That her and somebody else were doing uh, Just last week And she made a really good point That I hadn't thought about When it came to the Ravens offensive line um, Her and her co-host They were talking about how with Joe D, with him unfortunately passing away. Like, that's a big hit to the offensive line because that's something that they were, that's somebody who they were working with every single day, every single practice. Because it's, it's not like he was a defensive coordinator, so oversees the whole defense, or offensive coordinator oversees the whole. No, he was the offensive line coach. So he worked with these guys every single day. So when you got somebody that you work with every single day, they're giving you instructions every single day, and it's a person that you just love, and, and they just cool, they like family to you, and you working with you every single day, and you lose them, that can be crushing, man. That can crush you. So she brought out the point that maybe that, that's something that might have contributed to the Baltimore Ravens in their offensive line in their early struggles. Maybe they were just because in football, they don't really have time to grieve like that. Because it, football just keeps moving No matter what goes on Football, NFL, the NFL world just keeps moving It's non-stop So with them Maybe, just maybe that, that, that's some, that could have been something that Contributed to the early struggles And, and I mean, it, there were going to be Early struggles regardless Because, again, there, you had two starters Playing positions for the very first time But still, that could make things A, a lot worse So that's something that I just I had not thought about, and it should have been brought up. Um, I wish we would have brought that up sooner, and I wish I did. I would have thought about something like that. Uh, that's why I got to definitely give her flowers for bringing that topic up. Um, but the offensive line, recently, they've been a lot better. They've been a lot better. Um, things have been looking a lot smoother. They still had rough patches, but again, everything ain't going to be super crispy clean every single time. But if it's a game, I mean, Lamar threw, what, over 400 yards yet, four touchdowns, no picks. He got pressured here and there, but if you're quarterback, <laughs> your quarterback could throw 400 yards and four touchdowns and no interceptions, and Derrick Henry, I think he had 91 rushing yards, and of course, 51 of it came on the very last, well, second to last play, then the offensive line, they're doing something right. So much can be said about this Baltimore Ravens defense. They are certainly an interesting bunch. Why? Well, you know how with Baltimore Ravens, they are such a troll of a team because you see what they did or really didn't do against the Cincinnati Bengals. Watch next week against the Commanders. Watch they like play lockdown defense and they don't let Jaden. They make Jaden Daniels actually look like a real. Watch they do something. That would be so Baltimore Ravens-ish of them. That's the type of stuff that they do all the time. Anyway, um, Pro Football Talk brought this out. I said the Ravens have an NFL high 1,056 rushing yards. Ooh. It's a lot of running already. And get this. The run defense has, al has allowed an NFL low 302 yards. So that's a beautiful thing. So the Ravens, number one in rush offense, but also they, so they, they know how to run the ball so well, but they also know how to defend it so well because they're number one in run defense. I like that. But – that's how they defend because they don't be defending the pass for nothing. So team, keep it clean. We're here at my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be a part of it, for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Just send me a DM on there and we'll feature your question in a video just like this. And if you would like to become a team, keep it clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving viz. Now special shout out to the newest team, keep it clean patron, my guy, Greg from Long Beach. So shout out to my guy, Greg. Appreciate you, seriously, for becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron. Appreciate you for uh, showing support to the channel. I appreciate that a lot. So let's get into some more questions from the Team Keep It Clean patron. First one came from my guy, Derek. Now, hey, this is why y'all got to wait till the game is over. It ain't over till.
feel this so well, but anyway he said engraving i'm not sure the results of this game so he sent this before the game ended obviously but he said but lamar not wanting to run like just like we've seen right before the half this is ridiculous man he listens to the critics more than his support base what doesn't he understand his critics want to see him fail no matter what he does 400 yards four passing touchdowns 100 that's exactly what he ends up getting to this crazy he said uh 100 yards on the ground two touchdowns uh the people want to see him fail Plain and simple, it's like trying to befriend people who just don't like you. Lamar needs to get that inner LeBron James in him. Oh, so he's saying just to stop listening to all that outside stuff. In that game, we did see him hesitate um, a couple of different times. And I think one of them was when he, I mean, he's always looking to pass, obviously. He ain't never really looking to run like that. But um, he, there was one where he was waiting for, it looked like a, a check down or a short pass. He was waiting for them to come open. And he pump faked a couple of times, but I guess they just never came open or he ain't like what he saw. So he ended up taking off. Um, there was another one where he ran and if he would have kept straight, then he would have got more yards than he did, but he started like shaking early. Uh, he just, he did, just did look really uh, hesitant yesterday uh, when it came to him taking off. So much different than he did in the, like in the Bills game, he snapped the ball. He saw, okay, bye. He saw a lane. Said, yeah, I'm out of here. See ya. But in the Bengals game, he hesitated. Obviously it worked out. In the long run, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it happens sometimes. Um, yesterday was yesterday was weird because he had an amazing game, uh, amazing game. But there was stuff. It was just some little stuff in there. I don't want to be like oh, like nitpicky anything like that. But along with the success, along with the good stuff, talk about the bad stuff too. Talk about it all. So uh, and we talked about it earlier. He did have the, the the two fumbles. One of them he lost. Like and both both at the snap. Both at the snap. He just dropped it. Say he took his eyes off it for like a split second and dropped it. So, oof, that was rough. Um, but then, yeah, the just being a little hesitant. But he ain't hesitate to get that win, though. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy David. He says, somehow, after an 0-2 start, we are now leading the AFC North. Thank you, Cowboys, for beating the Steelers. Yes, shout out to the Cowboys. We got y'all boys next week. Well, hopefully. Anyway, he said, there's something uh, deathly wrong with the secondary and pass rush, and we need to do something fast. Do you think EDC should consider trading Marcus Williams or trading for Jadavian Clowney again? Uh, thanks for all you do for the Ravens community. No, thank you, David. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> he trying to get, people trying to get Marcus Williams up. Out of here. Woo. Uh, you can't trade Marcus Williams. Too much money. Um. Trade him for the Jadavian Clowney? Nah, you know, I like, you know, you know, I wouldn't mind that at all. That, that, that's my guy. But I don't think he would want to be traded because um, I know he got family. He got some stuff going on with his family, and that's where he's from, uh, from that area. So that's why he went there. That's why he ended up signing there. Um, but I, I just think it's adjustments, man. I, I just really think it's, it's, it's adjustments for sure. I, I think that's been the biggest issue. I don't think it's personnel. I don't, because the pass rush overall, the pass rush has been pretty good overall. It doesn't have their little hiccups here and there, but they've been good overall. But the secondary, like you got them all, you got, Nate, you got Kyle Hamilton, you got Marcus Williams. So when, when you hear them names and just pass defense overall, you got a Roquan Smith, got a lot of experience in the game. Like you hear those names overall and how the pass rush has been overall, it's been good too. You think like, oh yeah, Ravens defense is going to be something nice. But it's just been hiccups here and there. Um... I feel like Eddie Jackson, he's still learning stuff, so he's still getting adjusted. Uh, with Marcus Williams, I know a lot of people feel like Marcus Williams has just been bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to judge Marcus Williams properly um, because I don't like sit there and watch him every single play. Um, I feel like there he did get turned around yesterday by Jamal Chase, so maybe he should have played that one a little deeper, I think, with the situation because the, the Bengals were trying to get a touchdown, and they were throwing, so he probably should have backed up a little bit more um but yeah he just but i mean the whole baltimore ravens defense they didn't want to cover jamar chase yesterday but anyway but i i am glad like i would have hated and it's frustrating for either fan base because i know i know they sick right now Bengals fans got to be sick because they're like oh joe bro he threw five touchdowns against Ravens starters on defense and they still lost oh that that's gotta hurt because if lamar threw four touchdowns yesterday and the Ravens, oh, I would have been crushed. Like, oh, come on. What a waste. Not necessarily a waste, but a waste. So, ooh, I know Bengals fans hurting. But, um, no, Marcus Williams, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's personnel when it comes to defense. I, I just think it's adjustments need to be made. Because we've seen games where they've looked amazing. 
So they just got to fine tune some stuff here and there. Tackling too, you 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 got to tackle. You got to be a little more physical, man. So once they get those little fine tuned adjustments figured out, then they'll be straight. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean, patient. My guy Keontae. He said, "I love the fact that my boy Freight Train Tuck, Justin Tucker, was able to help get us back into this game with a good old fashioned fifty three yarder." Yeah, we love that. We love that. I appreciate the confidence that they put back in him that the fact that they trusted him i mean they really had no choice because i mean it was for them but I, I i do love that for justin tuck i love that for the ravens john harbaugh on his presser today he said that after that field goal he said justin tucker got all in his face and he said oh he, he invaded my personal space but he said justin tucker got all in his face and said hey let's go win this game and guess what that's exactly what they did and justin tucker got to be the one to put the icing on the cake but anyway continuing he said uh but i'm on my lamar jackson right now while i am happy what is going on with the defense we could he oh while i'm happy what is going on with the defense we couldn't stop the run or the pass and it's crazy to think that given our history i really think the play calling has to get more creative with the pressures what are your thoughts boom right on time that's exactly what we were talking about with the last question see team keep it clean y'all be on it man i i, I love y'all so much but that's exactly what I was saying, because I don't think it's personnel. I, I don't. I just think it's it's whether the scheme is a mix of scheme. It's a mix of miscommunication that played a big role recently, too. Yesterday's game, uh, the Bills game, um, the Raiders. It just it's been a lot of miscommunications, too. So it's new brand new defensive coordinator uh, defense. It's a different defense. It ain't Mike McDonald's defense. So. It's just, it's been a work in progress. But again, like I said earlier, if they fine tune some stuff, then they should be straight.